Deshaun Watson has been traded to the Cleveland Browns, and he signed a five-year extension. Uh, I don't have the numbers pulled up in front of me. Chris, do you remember what it was? One hundred and twenty-six million. One hundred and I think it was more than that, wasn't it? It was something. Uh, crazy. Watson? No, it's one. I think it's one. Watson is for uh, two hundred over two hundred million. Okay, Hang so da, 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 I'm pulling up Deshaun Watson contract. Um, That's like two sixty or something crazy. Let's see. Oh, five year, two hundred and thirty million dollar contract. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, I had my numbers say, Yeah, up. it was way bigger than. Or, that is that is a fat fat contract. The Browns said that they have done their due diligence. They have done a huge huge dive into what all is going on with his, uh, you know, his cases and whatnot that are that are currently pending, currently going on. But uh, but you know, no criminal charges being filed against Deshaun Watson, so he will be playing next year. It does appear. Um, you know, we let let's talk about Watson and why he chose Cleveland. Uh, first off, what what were your thoughts on this? Um, I I think of the teams that were looking at him, uh, two of them are close. I think they were basically looking at the the Browns. They were looking at he was looking at the uh, the Saints. And he was looking at the Falcons. Um, I think the Saints are in in that order. I think Cleveland is better than the Saints. Outside of the quarterback position, I think the Saints are better than the Falcons, and the Falcons are last in that article or order of talent and ready to win. Um, you've got a uh, more established head coach, while all three of the head coaches are young and inexperienced. Uh, people in the league know who Stefanski is and and trust him more. So he went in the place with the. I would I would probably get the nod to better head coach as of right now. Uh, he's won coach of the year before. That's a big deal. Um, he's more talent. And then also, man, they showed him some love. You know, they guaranteed that whole contract. That yeah. We haven't had a single contract come through of this magnitude that didn't have opt-out galores all over it. Oh, yeah. And this is 100% guaranteed. That is, uh, it's crazy. Uh, his base salary in 2022 is $1.035 million. Uh, that's the amount from which he would lose on a per-game basis if he's suspended by the NFL over the allegations of sexual assault, etc. So if he's suspended, he's not going to lose a bunch of that money this year, which is, yep. you know, a, a very they, smart. They work the contract yeah. in a way in which he he's protected. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to get some type of suspension, but... But now that we know there's not going to be criminal charges, and, 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 and we can get into the case of Deshaun Watson if you want, anytime you want. I've, I've, I've followed it. I've studied it. We talked about it early on. Um, you know, our early, and I will rehash our early arguments for this. When it first happened, and we ended up in a matter of a week, week and a half, we went from one complaint to 22 complaints. Yes. I, my my initial argument was there's zero chance nothing happens. There's also zero chance all of it happens. There's just not. Agreed. It's somewhere in the middle, and and I I will tell you that I know the justice system pretty well. Okay, I I, I was a criminal justice major in school, and and I, I was very interested in. They want to be a cop. They want to know all. I'm very interested in sentencing issues. Um, how do we get certain people, like certain charges on certain people, how, like how the ins and outs of this? I'm, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a lawyer. They would know it better than me. But but I bet I know it better than most of the lay people. And, and I will tell you, when it comes to he said, she said, sexual assault type of things where there's very little to no evidence involved, it is almost impossible to get a conviction. It is very, very easy to get an indictment. It is very easy to get a charge. And when you go before a grand jury and you don't get an indictment, that, that there's not enough in what that says is they didn't have enough evidence for them to think it was more probable than not. Remember that phrasing? Oh, yeah. They didn't think there was probable cause. If you were driving home after the Chiefs uh, uh, won the AFC title game, and and Patrick Mahomes' goofy ass wife sprayed champagne all over you, and you got pulled over. You hadn't had a drink of alcohol all day. 
just the smell of the champagne being on your clothes is enough probable cause for you to potentially spend the night in jail and then impound your car. Okay? So probable, probable cause is not a complicated or hard thing. And anybody who's ever had a run in with the police officers understand they can get PC real, real easily. And the fact that they didn't have enough probable cause to bring a charge doesn't make me as a Browns fan excited or happy or whatever, because I still believe something happened. The same, some saint here. But these stories have gotten so out of whack that, that we, we're so we're so far beyond the pale of knowing what happened that they couldn't even bring a charge on him. Exactly. And that 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 says there's way, way, way more than meets the eye, and we are holding Watson to a standard of you are one hundred percent guilty before you even see a courtroom or, or let us litigate this thing. Yeah. That yeah. I have a I that I have a problem with the media doing that. Oh we're, we're back to the world of believe all women. And and I'm not saying believe none of them, but but believe all anybody is foolish and stupid. Agreed, agreed. Uh, the deal, by the way, the Texans are going to get a first round pick in 2022, 2023, and 2024, as well as a 2023 third round pick and a 2024 fourth round pick. I uh, I think it's a good move for the Texans. Go ahead and and continue this rebuild, make it work. Uh, this was. You know, we we all knew it was eventually going to happen. Nick Casario is the the GM for the Texans, and he said in a statement on Friday he believed trading Watson was the right move for their organization. He said our priority right now is adding talented players to the foundation we've already put in place over the last fifteen months, and this trade supports that plan. Uh, as we navigate through the rest of the offseason, we we remain open minded to all avenues that allow us to improve our roster and add to our program. So now we've got. Three first round pick, well, four first round picks right now. I guess six if you if you count all three years. But they got an additional one in every single year. You can use that to go get a quarterback, or you can draft and rebuild your roster. And and that's exactly that's what right. the Texans have been talking about doing for quite some time. Uh, for the Browns, well, they have to because that roster is bad. Yeah, uh, for the Browns, the roster has been great, other than maybe the quarterback position, right? And and they dealt yep. with a ton of injuries last year, et cetera, but. This is a move that definitely makes them a Super Bowl contender, right? And, yeah. and we thought no, they, they were this they, past they year. In, yeah, no, they instantly moved into the realm of Super Bowl contender. We have to remember there are people out there right now that are sitting all over this deal. Oh, Watson wasn't really that good when he played. Look at his number. Y'all oh. morons, you don't remember. This is a guy with a severely inept roster that had a 14 point lead in the going into the second half against the, the Patrick Mahomes Chiefs. In Arrowhead, the year they won the Super Bowl, okay, they haven't played football since. But but that that's the last time we saw him, and he was unquestionably at that day and time the number two best quarterback in the league, and it wasn't debatable. Okay, now I don't think he's number two today. You go that long without playing, I think there's going to be some some getting your feet back in you. Um, I also think the caliber of football has gone up. You got a couple of guys like uh, uh, Josh Allen that have now stepped into the realm, and and Joey B, and 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 a few others that are saying, "Hey, you know, we belong in that conversation too." But I'm going to tell you this: he's undoubtedly a top five quarterback. You can't name five guys that are better than him on the football field. You you just can't. <laughs> and if you do, you're just lying to yourself. Man, that's just it. They uh they currently have the eight best odds or eighth shortest odds to win the Super Bowl in 2022, or, well, 2023, Super Bowl 57, right? Uh, they've got the exact same odds as the San Francisco 49ers, who we were very curious, you know, why why are the 49ers up that high, et cetera, and we thought it might have something to do with the, the fact that the 49ers might be trying to get a new quarterback. They could be going after Tom Brady, et cetera. Uh, so I think that this is kind of, they've calculated it in there that, Watson could miss some time this year. He could miss the whole year. Yep. You never know. But, I don't think there's any way he's going to do that. I think it's going to be around four to, to six games, maybe eight. Ben Roethlisberger got four or six. Zeke Elliott got four or six. Like, like all these guys have gotten about the same. You're talking about a realm where, where you know, I think, I think Goodell's been horrible at his job. 
I also think he's he's been consistent with this. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, the next question for this is what happens with Baker Mayfield, right? I, I would assume well, that with eighteen million dollars, like, like hell to trade him. Yeah, you got to find a trade partner for him. Uh, much the same way that the Colts had to find one for Wentz, much the same way that the Falcons had to find one for Matt Ryan. But in this situation, you got a guy going into the last year of his deal. This will be basically a tryout year. I don't imagine that anybody is going to uh, take on Mayfield and go ahead and give him a new contract. But No, he's going to have to play out the deal. Yeah. Um, here's the problem, though. They're trying to trade him. They can't find a trade partner. That, that says more about the league's perspective of Baker. A lot of people in Cleveland have been hating on the Browns and the Browns front office and all this stuff and whatever else. Listen, they they tried to trade Baker as part of this deal, and the Texans said, no, we'll take the pick. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, that says something, right? Like, yeah. you can have a bona fide starting quarterback. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good, okay? We got the giraffe back there, all right? You seen this guy's neck? Yeah, he can play. We're okay. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, two days ago, when all this stuff went down, he wanted to be traded to the Indianapolis Colts. He, and, he wants to be in the Colts. And the Colts went with a 36 year old Matt Ryan, who will be 37 when uh, when the season uh, is finished. Yep. And yeah, I think that tells you a lot, right? Like it. <laughs> that's right. No, that's no. And here's the thing: everybody in the league might be wrong. Baker might get on somewhere, and he might prove everybody wrong. The, the problem is, is nobody. This, this is not, listen, they traded Case Keenum over the weekend, okay? They had no problems trading Case Keenum. They can't find a trade partner for Baker Mayfield right now. And, and I do not believe it is because they are asking for the moon. I don't think they're going into this thing trying to get a first-round pick for him. Or, uh, you know, or, you know, something crazy. Yeah, I think if they could get anything for him right now, I think they would they would make that move. Um, do you think it's crazy to think that they might just, uh, I mean, obviously they've already picked up his fifth-year option, but, you know, uh, I mean, do you cut him? Like, do you, <laughs> because well, I, no, I think the no, way that this went down. You, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get somebody to give you something for him by draft night. Um you know, even even if somebody's going to go into the draft hoping to get a quarterback and they're going to swing and they're going to miss and, you know, somebody's going to move in front of them and they're not going to be ready. And, and somebody will give you something for him. Um, but, but no, I, I just – because if you cut him, you, you owe him the money. Yeah. No, you're, you're not wrong about that. Uh, a few potential trade partners, at, you know, and there's a bunch of different articles about this. The most that I've seen is the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, that might would make sense. They don't have Russell Wilson right now, so we'll you know we'll see what's going on. And I, I don't think that the Seahawks believe that Drew Locke is going to be their guy. The Carolina Panthers, no. I think the I think we have figured out what the deal is with uh, Sam Darnold. So it will not be Darnold, but uh, but Tepper could go and get you know a, a young franchise kind of guy like Baker Mayfield. We'll we'll see. Uh, I saw a lot of things. You're going to get him on the cheap. You're, yeah. you're going to own the eighteen. But but it's not like he's going to cost you a, a lot in draft capital. I don't think. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Uh, the I'm New Orleans this, Saints. I think the football team. I do think the football team is mad because oh, they didn't yeah. see this happening. They didn't see this coming. And I I believe I have my issues with Baker. I believe Baker is substantially. I mean, substantially better than Carson Wentz. I think so too. I think so too. The Falcons might would make sense, obviously, but all the all the reports right now are that it's going to be Marcus Mariota, but we'll see. Uh, the Saints have re-signed Jameis Winston since you and I have started talking, so I uh, yep. don't think it's going to be the Saints. I'm I'm curious. Uh, you know, I mean, it, could we see Baker Mayfield in Pittsburgh with the Steelers? Uh, who knows? Who knows? We'll we'll see what ends up happening with that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.